Our scripture this morning comes from Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 44. And I'm going to, uh, as we go into this, I'm going to give you a little background real quick in case you need a refresher. Uh, the Gospel of Luke was written in about 60 AD, and Luke's Gospel begins with the narrative of the birth of John the Baptist, and it covers the life of Christ up through his ascension, is what, and that's where you know he picks up with the second volume, which is Acts. But we're going to look at the very end of the book of Luke today, and I'm going to apologize. I don't have my usual Bible with me. It didn't make it into the bag this morning, so... You're going to be hearing the King James this morning. I hope that's okay. But let's uh, stand together in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that he might, they might understand the scriptures and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and ye are witnesses of these things and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high and he led them out as far as to Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them and it came to pass while he blessed them he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for divinely inspiring Dr. Luke to pen these words. And we thank you for what we are about to learn from them this morning. And Father, we just ask that you will open our minds, open our hearts, and open our ears to receive understanding this morning. And we ask this in the name of our Savior Christ. Amen. Please be seated. And I think I mentioned it a little earlier, but happy Mother's Day. For those of you who may have not been with us uh, for the, what I call the Hallmark holidays over the last several years. I don't typically preach sermons specific to Mother's Day, Father's Day, all those. While they're important, uh, I don't feel I need to, you know, if you're here with your mother in church, I don't feel like I need to tell you to honor her because you're doing that. And if you're a mother here today, I don't need to preach Proverbs 31 and make you feel guilty for not weaving your fabric for your children's clothing or things like that. So we'll just uh, stick with instead preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we're going to do that. Now, uh, and I say that because the Lord is who is truly worthy of our worship. And if we were to be like a lot of our other churches, if we were to observe what's called the church calendar, and many of our brothers and sisters do, we would have noticed that this past Thursday would have been observed as the ascension of Christ, or the day that he ascended into heaven, which was 40 days after his resurrection. You believe it's been that long since Easter Sunday already? So I think it's a good reminder though to talk about this, you know, on well we're a little past 40 days but it's a good thing to remember we need to occasionally look at the ascension of christ and we need to see uh, today specifically three things that christ gave to the disciples at his ascension and we're going to see that he gave them an understanding he gave them a mission and he gave them a promise of power and those are all important to us as believers to understand today. Now, the first thing that he did was he gave them understanding. 
Well, the first thing to realize about understanding is that understanding requires knowledge. You do not understand 100% of the things you don't know. That's just the way it is. You know, I will give you an example. I do not understand the inner workings of the internal combustion engine. I just don't. Fortunately, there are some who do. But I don't have the knowledge on that. Now, we read in verse 44 that, you know, Jesus had told them everything written about him in the scriptures must be fulfilled. And he specifically mentions the three main sections of what we now call the Old Testament or what back then would have just been called the scriptures because that's all they had. And he mentions the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And the Messiah is mentioned in all of those sections of the Old Testament. He is woven throughout the teachings of the Old Testament. They were always to be looking for him for salvation. And so he explains that to them. He shows them how all of the scriptures declare and point to him. He showed them the ways in which he was the fulfillment of all of the prophecies the ways he was the fulfillment of all of the law, the ways in which even the songs that they had sung in worship for hundreds and hundreds of years up to this point pointed to him. He opened their minds to understanding this. Now, I want us to be careful here we have to, you know, we have to seek understanding of the scriptures, of course. You know, we do want to understand the scriptures. I can tell you, you will never want, you will never understand the scriptures you don't read. You're just never going to. If you are not spending time in the word of God, as a daily practice, you are going to miss out on one of the things that Christ gave at his ascension, which is understanding. Because he's not going to give you a fresh perspective on his word if you're not reading his word. He's not going to give you a new revelation, if you will, if you are not paying attention to what he's already revealed about himself. You can just hang that up. You know, he's not going to keep hounding you, if you will. He's like, I've said it. Read what I said. So there's a couple of important things we need to pay attention to, which is one, if you're not studying the scriptures for yourself, you might be prone to believe anything. Trust me, there are, you know, Bible teachers out here teaching all sorts of nonsense that is not true. I saw a thing somebody the other day where somebody had shared this whole thing, this whole, basically a paragraph about why they believed that hell was not real. It's like, um, have you opened the book at all? clearly mentioned we didn't pull this doctrine out of thin air but people believe that they they take a little piece of the scripture here and a little piece of there and you know they put together something that's not right and doesn't work it would be i mean it would be absolutely ludicrous to do such a thing it would it would be the equivalent of taking, you know, a, a handful of two by fours and, a, and three or four roofing shingles and expecting to build a house. You don't have everything you need if you were not in the word, reading the word, studying it for yourself. 
You're just not. And if you're not studying the scriptures, you are not understanding at all what God has revealed about himself. You are certainly missing out. And if you are not studying the scriptures, actually you're ignoring God himself. You're ignoring what he said. How many of you, you know, how many of your parents would have tolerated you ignoring them? Any of you have a mother that would have tolerated you ignoring them? I can tell you mine wouldn't have. And most of you would not have tolerated that from your children. But reading and studying, while it is important, it is essential because you will not understand what you don't read. It's also important that the Lord helps us to understand the scriptures. Particularly, we read verse 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Now, the Apostle Paul gives us a great insight into this in uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15. He writes, but the person without the spirit does not receive what comes from God's spirit because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. The spiritual person, however, can evaluate everything. Now, even before sending the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, which we'll talk about next week on Pentecost Sunday, even before sending the Holy Spirit, Christ enabled his disciples to understand everything that had been written about him in the scriptures. Everything they had been taught their whole lives. They wouldn't have understood it had they not been taught. But they couldn't understand also without him opening their minds to understanding him. And when Christ ascended, of course, 10 days later, he sent the Holy Spirit to help not only the apostles there, but future generations of Christians to understand the scriptures. You cannot have an understanding of God without an understanding of his word. You can't have an understanding of his word without reading his word, but you also can't have an understanding of his word without not only reading it, but without his spirit in you helping you to understand what you're reading. Makes sense, right? He acts as sort of a uh, interpreter, if you will. It's important. We must know these things. We must understand. And Christ gave them an understanding at the ascension. He continues to give us an understanding. And if we do not submit ourselves to the understanding of the Holy Scriptures, we cannot be successful in the mission that Christ has given us. And he did that day give them a mission as well. And by them, I mean not only the one standing there with him that day, he gave the whole church a mission. Verses 47 and 48. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. That's what he specifically told these disciples in Luke's account. Now Matthew's account is a little more direct. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. We know that, right? We've heard that time and time and time again. This was not only the mission for those who were present when Christ ascended to heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. This is the mission of his church here on earth today. Wherever on earth his church is to be found, that is his mission for the church. And that's not his mission for a handful of people in the church or those who 
are called to be missionaries to you know the global south or you know in in jungle somewhere that is his mission for those who are called into the body of christ wherever they may be found even in stony creek virginia that is what he has for us he gave us a mission and that mission is for all disciples past present and those who will follow after us that's important then we must teach our children this mission but it definitely includes us and our children won't learn to live out this mission if they don't see us doing it now again on the day of the ascension he gave them an understanding he gave them a mission and if we receive the understanding of the scriptures we must accept his mission and then we must also receive his promised power in fact we are completely unable to do the thing he has called us to do without his power in us. But, in fact, Christ did promise power from on high, and we'll be talking about that more next week. But, verse 49, Look, I am sending you what my Father promised. As for you, stay in the city until you are empowered from on high. Any of y'all ever been told just to wait? And you don't know how long you're expected to wait? Interesting thing here. He did not say, wait 10 days till the day of Pentecost and I'm going to send you this power. He didn't tell them what this power was going to come looking like. What they were going to experience. He didn't tell them any of that. For all they knew, they could have been waiting years. When he said, wait in Jerusalem until I give you this power. But it's important that they did. Christ's people are not equipped for Christ's work without Christ's Holy Spirit in them. That's just not the way it is. Well, fortunately, we receive the Holy Spirit when we believe. That doesn't mean we always pay attention to the Holy Spirit. Some of us have gotten pretty good at ignoring him. But he gave them their mission and then told them to wait because they would receive power. And without this power, they could not do the thing he called them to do. It would be sort of like attempting to drive to Florida without putting gas in your vehicle or charging it up, depending on what you drive. You're not going to make it very far. The fact is you need his power to do what he has commanded you, and you also need the understanding of his mission. You see, I hope you can see how these are all tying together how this is important because the, the, the disciples certainly were not going to be able to do the mission we still can't today although we like to try to do things on our own power how many of y'all ever been around a toddler who is learning to do things they like to do it themselves right did anybody not have that experience <laughs> And sometimes they don't do it themselves the way we want them to. They, they, they may struggle with the tying of the shoes or the pouring of the milk or, you know, they make make a mess. Think how much of a mess we make when we don't rely on his power. Think of how clumsy and bumbling we can be and how we can lack understanding. Think of that. It's the same thing. 
But he told them, I've given you this mission, but wait until you're empowered with the whole, you know, from on high. While they were waiting, though, it was not, they were not just sitting around, you know, streaming the latest series on Netflix. They were not doing nothing. We are told that they were in the temple continually praising God. They were thankful for what they had already seen. If you think about this, these apostles had seen scripture fulfilled. Not everybody could say that. They had seen promises from the scripture come true. And they've been told they're going to continue to see more of this promises come true. How great is that? It's much easier for you to believe someone's going to keep a promise when you've seen them keep promises already, right? That's the way it is. These disciples had seen this. And by extension, we have seen this. We have their accounts in the Gospels. We have their witness accounts. We have the witness of all what happened throughout the book of Acts. But let's look even closer. Let's look at the things we have witnessed. How many of us have witnessed lives changed for Christ? How many of us have witnessed healings? Sometimes ones that, you know, of course, medical science will always try to explain it, but is there really an explanation outside of God? for some of the healings we've seen. The people who the doctors were sure had cancer and then they go back for the follow-up test and it's there's nothing there. For those who've been terribly sick and bounced back from it, we see these miracles today. We're less prone to think of them as miracles, but they are, in fact, miracles. We see Christ's power at work. I think it's time for us to get on board with that. Now, what about us? What happens when we receive the Holy Spirit? That power comes with that. What what becomes of us? It does not lead to just a slightly improved version of ourselves. We are talking about a life transformation here. And again, we're going to talk more on this subject next week when we discuss Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down. But until then, I want you to keep these things in mind. The last thing Christ did after his 40 days on earth, before he ascended into heaven, was he gave his disciples an understanding of the scriptures, a way to understand them. He's provided the same for us. The last thing he did was give them a mission. He's provided that same mission for us. And he promised power, and he's also provided that power for us. What? is it that we should be doing in light of what he gave us right before he ascended to be at the right hand of the Father? How should we live with that knowledge? Of course, I give this to you all every week and you know it. You know, how to share the gospel with a friend. And some of y'all are getting pretty good at this. But the fact is, we know that the gospel is good news, right? But before it's good news, it is bad news. Why is it bad news? That's right. Every one of us is born a sinner. Every one. 
There, nobody outside of Jesus Christ himself was born a perfect, sinless human. We were all born sinners. What's the worst news? That's right. We cannot work our way out of this. There is, it is a debt that we could never pay. But then what's the good news? Yes, Jesus did for us what we cannot do for ourselves. He lived that life without sin, making him the perfect sacrificial lamb. He paid the penalty for our sins on the cross, died and was buried, and then resurrected on the third day, which we celebrated at Easter. That resurrection proved what he was saying was true. It proved the validity of his sacrifice for us. It is enough. It is not the work of Christ plus my good deeds. It's not what Christ did on the cross plus me being just really super good. It's the work of Christ on the cross, period. That is it. That is the only thing that will allow us eternal life. What's the best news of all? It's free. That's right. We cannot earn it. There is no way, but we don't have to. It is a free gift given to us, but we must receive it. Let's be sure to share that news with people this week. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and merciful Father, we thank you for this passage of Scripture again this morning. We thank you for what Christ has provided us at the Ascension, the fact that he provided us with the means to understand your word, the fact that he provided us with a mission that we need to accomplish, and that he has provided us with the power to do this mission. Father, we ask that if there is anybody here today or watching online later who does not know Jesus as their Lord, we would ask that this would be the day they would come to know him. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. As we